Hey guys, how's it going? Nate here, master of none. Hope you're doing well. Wanted to do a little demonstration video. It might seem somewhat redundant, but surprisingly I've been on a couple tree jobs and for some reason people don't know how to start a chainsaw. And I know that at one point in my life I was there and I didn't really know how to do it. So I wanted to do a little video to show you how to start a chainsaw and also to show you what can be done in the event that you flood the chainsaw other than just waiting and also a couple little just demonstrations on what to do or what not to do with your chainsaw. So we'll get right into it. Okay guys, so our first saw that we're going to try to get started is a top handle saw. There are a lot of different kind of saws like this. You have the Still, Echo, um, Husqvarna, lots of different brands of saws. I prefer to use Still and I like commercial saws. Um, a word from our sponsors. So this is a, a Still Premix. It's expensive, and if you're doing commercial jobs and using your gas and, and your premix a lot, you probably won't want to buy this. It's about $40 for one of these. But it is a good pre-mixture. This gasoline lasts a long time. Something you may not know is that uh, gasoline doesn't last forever. So I, we live in Florida here, and people go crazy. You know, when the hurricanes come, they start filling up their gas cans and and in reality, you better use that gas because especially ethanol type gas is not going to last a long time. So this is just a word from our sponsor. I'm more of a still guy. Um, this is a great gas to use for your saw. And you won't be disappointed if your budget can afford it. So all saws need oil and lubricant. This is a thicker lubricant. Again, it's still bar and chain lubricant and this is bar and saw bar and chain lubricant um, this one is a little bit thicker and this one is a little bit thinner so I like running the thinner fluid because it seems to oil the chain much better and you want to have the chain getting oiled so that it can cut a lot smoother so okay now that we got gas covered bar lubricant covered uh, we're gonna try to get this saw started so again this is a top handle saw and we're going to start some of these other ones behind us which are more like regular ground saws or felling saws um, first off you want to make sure that your chain is sharp okay and then you're also going to have each saw has a brake chain brake so pushing it forward engages the brake pulling it towards you releases it you don't want to have your chain too tight. If it's too tight, it's going to sound like whoo. It's going to have a nice whiz sound. So you got a nice sharp chain. And you should have a little bit of slack here. It should be able to kind of give a little bit. But you don't also want it like hanging too loose. So you got to try to find that right balance. Almost like with a stick shift car. You got to find that right sweet spot for it. So... Again, you always want to make sure that you got gas, okay, and I got bar lubricant. That's only important if you're actually going to be cutting something, but you always want to make sure you got gas and lubricant. I know it seems stupid, but you'd be surprised how many times people think their car died or their motorcycle died or something died when really it was just out of gas. So, again, yeah, check for the gas. Um, you are going to prime this. There's a little primer bulb. These saws behind me don't have the primer bulb, so don't look for one. You won't find it. And then you'll see that all of these saws usually have two or three settings. This is the choke. So normally, and it's not always normal because sometimes people leave it on choke for whatever reason, but normally it's not on choke. And basically what that means is your carburetor is open and it's allowing air and gasoline into the engine at the same time because if too much gasoline gets in it's going to flood the chainsaw and if too much 
if there's no gasoline and only air, then you're not going to start the saw. It's just going to be air and it's going to be kind of like a dry compression coming through the saw. So we're going to choke it. And if you're looking at those little pictures on your saw, a good way to remember it is that an H, like the letter H, when you look at the choke, that means it's in choke position. And then when it's just all three, like three vertical lines, then that's non-choke position. So with this saw, I need to pull this little lever back and hold it, but you also have to pull the trigger and hold it and then pull that back. So then we got it on choke, we're holding it back, trigger's pulled, boom. You heard that? It turned over, the, the gas got in there, the air got in there a little bit, and the saw has some gas in the cylinder, it has some gas in the piston, and it's gonna start. It's not, as they would say, cold anymore. The saw is warmed up, because after it's been sitting for a while, it needs to be warmed up. Just like after you've been sitting on your chair all day watching YouTube, you get up and your hamstrings hurt and then you gotta stretch or move around, take a little walk. So again, you heard it, it turned over. Whoa. So again, pushing the thing forward is gonna turn your saw off. These saws actually, sometimes they lose that ability to shut off, something inside goes wrong and, and when you push it forward, it doesn't shut off. So another way to shut it off would be to choke it. Choking it will, will also turn the saw off. It's just another way to shut your saw off if it's not shutting off. So that's with that one, the 150 TC. This is a cool little saw. Uh, I got another video showing how I opened up the muffler which really helps the saw breathe a lot better and will help improve your uh, workmanship on the job cutting with this little saw and not wearing your arm out because it only weighs about five pounds. This saw is about 520 to $550 brand new. Uh, this is an older model, the 150. Right now you can go get the 151 TC, um, but this is the one I got. So moving on. All right, so this is your standard ground saw. It's the MS-250. And some people might say you need to start the saw with the brake on. I think as long as you got control of it, you know, and, and still will tell you to put the saw on the ground, put your foot in that little thing, and then pull the thing a couple times. And I just don't like bending over when I'm starting my saws, so I don't do that. But you should always wear proper eye protection uh, gloves and stuff like that so that you know everything's good I mean this chain could break off and hit your foot or something like that I don't know it hasn't happened to me but it could happen so just be careful these are power tools safety first so you're gonna do kind of like that same thing but again this one doesn't have a primer and there's actually one more option on these saws that is not on the top handle saws and that's like a partial choke so the partial choke is, it's not the H, and it's not, you know, the vertical, where the three lines are, in this case, it's, it'll show you, it's just one little line. But you got that partial choke. Now the partial choke is going to uh, keep the trigger down, and it's going to allow the chain to just continue to run. And it can be a good way if your saw has been flooded, you put it on that partial choke to allow some air in and you just got to keep pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. Or you do it on the regular, pulling it, pulling it to let the air come in so that it dries. Because the carb is basically allowing gas to only come in or a mixture of gas and air. So you do that same thing. You want to pull your trigger down. And you gotta, this is like the safety. So you pull that trigger down and then you choke it. And choke means all the way down like the H, you can see where it's now at the H. You can see that little H. So then you're gonna pull it. And my saw just turned over because I used that good gas. And we're gonna just show you what happens when you put it on that partial choke, halfway open, halfway closed. See how 
when you had it on that partial choke, it was running. The way to get that to stop running is to pull the trigger and then it will automatically switch up to the non-choke position. So on this saw, you want to stop it, you push it up. Or again, like I said, same thing. If the up switch, sometimes that up switch gets disconnected and if you don't know how to reconnect it, you can always just choke your saw again and it will shut itself off. So moving on to the next one. Again, it's like the same thing. This is the MS-291. 291. Don't play with your saws. Um, gonna pull the trigger. Same thing, hold the trigger. And then choke it, push it all the way down. And then, that was it, that was it turning over. You really gotta pay attention for that because when it's not turning over, it doesn't sound the same. It sounds more like that. Hmm. See, now the problem with this saw is that it doesn't have enough gasoline in it. Really, these saws, your car, everything works best on a full tank of gas. So don't forget that. I don't really need to show you how this one is. I don't want to put gas in it. I don't want to let the gas sit there. Because even with good gas, it's not so great to leave gas in your saws. So we're going to move on to the 440. This saw is just badass. MS-440, 25 inch bar, double dogs. It's the same thing. Now these saws do have what's called a compression relief valve. And to relieve the compression, you would push it in. And then that's gonna let the, the saw pull out a lot easier. But I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna pull it out. And we're gonna start the saw in the same way. Again, you got this choke here. Hold the trigger, push it down to the bottom. Yeah, it just turned over. So then you flip it from the choke. Usually it's gonna stop at that halfway choke, which is gonna allow the chain to run, like I said earlier. If you don't want that to happen, you can put the brake on. You can see how the saw wasn't going because I had the brake on. So that's a good way to not let the saw run in case people are running around or, or doing something. Again, you're not supposed to start it standing up, but I do it. Another thing that people do that is just kind of ridiculous is they pull the saw out like the, the cord. They pull it too much. These saws don't need a whole bunch to get them started. You can just do, you can just do a little pull. And I always think like from here to my chest is about as far, whoa. Again, it's about as far as you want this thing to go. That's about as far as it's gonna go. It's not gonna go any further. If you end up pulling it further, you're gonna pull the cord out and you're not gonna be happy with that result. So, now, let's say you're going on Craigslist, searching around offer up, and you wanna go buy a chainsaw. Now, how do you know if a chainsaw is good? You look at it, wow, it looks so clean, it looks so great. And then you go there and you know, you try to start it and it's not starting. And the guy says, oh, well, it just needs gas. Just put gas in it. So then you take, you buy it, you take it home and you try to start it and it's not starting. And you think, what the hell? Well, could be a number of things. Could need a new spark plug. Um, could need gas. It could need a new piston and a new cylinder. Maybe they put straight gas in it with no mixture and they blew the engine up. One good way to tell is to see if the saw has good compression. And a way you can do that 
This saw has great compression. See how it's not barely up? The weight of the saw is barely, you know, letting gravity pull it down because the piston is tight. It has a tight compression to it and it's not allowing air or anything to kind of get past it. So it's snug, firm in the cylinder. Now let's say that the saw has a blown piston, but it's not seized up. What's gonna happen is you hold the saw, you hold the pull cord, and you let the saw go, and basically the saw just goes and it goes straight to the ground. So this has good compression. See how it's barely, barely going? Well, if it doesn't have good compression, again, you just hold the saw, hold the cord, and then just let go of the saw gently. Don't drop it on your toes. And that'll let you know if it has good compression. Another thing you can do, if you really wanna be a, a tire kicker, is, and bring your little, your crinch, scrinch, whatever you call this, little still tool, and, or, in this case, you're gonna need a socket set. And you're going to need to, what is this, a eight millimeter socket. Usually all of them have the same thing. But you're gonna to have to remove the muffler. And if you remove that muffler, and I'm not gonna do it, but if you remove the muffler, you take a little flashlight, you can see inside the piston and the cylinder somewhat, you can see the piston. And usually you can see if the piston is scored. And what that means is somebody put straight gas in it, or maybe it's an older saw, and there's like lines on it, like cuts. And that's basically where the metal rubbed against the metal without any type of lubricant, any type of oil or pre-mixed gas. And it caused scoring on the piston. So if you're buying a used chainsaw, you can use those two methods. You could go further and, and buy one of those little compression kit testers and make sure that there's good compression, usually between, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like 130 to 150 PSI would be like good compression, I think. Something like that. But anyways, I just used those two little <coughs> test kits. Is it, if it's just <coughs> no good compression. You could also take the spark plug off and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when you let it go, it just <coughs> and it just falls straight to the ground. So uh, another thing, when you're running chainsaws, don't be the guy that's going around cutting logs and sticking the chain in the dirt. Because when you stick your chain in the dirt, it's going to dull the chain. And you don't want a dull chain because then it's not going to cut the wood. You're going to have to sharpen it. And it just kills your chain. And it's best to have a really sharp chain. The new ones are always the best, but they're usually like 30 to 100 bucks, depending on the size of the bar. So it's best to just avoid sticking your saw on the ground when you cut stuff, you know. Don't tilt your saw when it's really close to the ground. Just let it sit on the ground like that. Let the base sit on the ground when you're making those cuts so that you don't dig your chain into the dirt. So, again, I uh, hope this video was helpful. I didn't want it to be like demeaning because I remember at one time I didn't know how to start a chainsaw. So I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching. Master of None. Subscribe, like, stay tuned. I'll have some more coming.